The Mayor and City Council welcome you to the Peoria City Council meeting. As a courtesy to others, please silence all phones. If you would like to address an issue that is on the agenda, or if you would like to speak to the Council regarding a non-agenda item, please complete a speaker request form, which can be found in the front lobby of the Peoria City Council Chambers, or in the tray to the left of the speaker's podium. Please place the completed speaker request form in the second tray to the left of the speaker's podium, labeled Request to Speak. All speakers will have three minutes to complete their comments. A countdown clock is easily visible on the left side of the wall behind the City Council dais. Only items listed on the agenda may be addressed by the Council. Since items presented as part of the speaker request have not been listed on the agenda, and due to the requirements of the open meeting laws, the Council will be unable to respond to items presented as part of the speaker's request. However, please be aware that your comments will be noted. The speaker's name will be called to speak at the appropriate time in the order that the forms were received. Thank you for your interest and participation in the Peoria City Council meeting. Peoria City Council meeting will now come to order. Please rise for a moment of quiet reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Vice Mayor Binsbacher. Thank you. Clerk will please call the roll. Mayor Carlett. Here. Vice Mayor Binsbacher. Here. Councilmember Patena. Here. Councilmember Edwards. Here. Councilmember Finn. Here. Councilmember Hunt. Here. Councilmember Leone. Here. Council Liaison Bowden. Here. And Council Liaison Camacho. Here. Good evening and welcome to the Peoria City Council meeting of February 16th, 2016. First item on the agenda is a presentation, and I would like to ask uh, Councilmember Bill Patena to join me uh, down on the floor. This is an opportunity for us to present certificates to those individuals who have volunteered to assist the city through their service on various boards and commissions. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have uh, over 20 boards and commissions at the City of Peoria and over 100 people that serve on those boards and commissions. And the City of Peoria is really very grateful for their service to our community. They save us literally tens of thousands of dollars. Anytime we can welcome anybody new uh, to our community as volunteers, we're happy to do so. And today we have three new members that will be uh, um, participating in the Peoria community. And when I call your name, would you please come up and get your award? <laughs> Mitchell Bolnick. Earl Guy, Historic Preservation Commission. And Historic Preservation Commission, Linda Spencer.
the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. And I will be removing items 13C and 14C at the request of staff. So we will vote on the consent agenda with the um, exclusion of items 13 and 14. Are there any other, any other items to be removed from consent? Seeing none, is there a motion? motion. Second. All right. Council, please vote. And the consent agenda passes unanimously. Um, I do have a request to speak on item 14C. Since that is no longer on the agenda, you are welcome to speak um, at the at the end of the um, at the end of the meeting. We have a request to speak for non-agenda items, or if you would like to speak directly to staff about an issue, where they are sitting right here, raise your hand, staff. <laughs> there we go. Lots of staff there for you. Okay. Thank you. Right. We will now move on to the regular agenda, new business. Let's begin with item 16R, a request to speak from Vice Mayor Binsbacher. Thank you, Mayor. I would just like to address a potential conflict of interest, and I'd like to recuse myself for this 16R agenda item. Thank you. Okay, so this is 16R contract amendment, Peoria Diamond Club, discussion and possible action to approve a contract amendment to extend the 2007 agreement through the 2016 season. Do we have a staff report? Yes, and Chris Calcaterra from our Community Services Department will uh, lead the staff presentation. Chris. Thank you. Mayor, members of council, thanks for your time tonight for a brief uh, presentation on the contract amendment between the City of Peoria and the Peoria Diamond Club. As many of you may know, the Peoria Diamond Club has been a fantastic partner over 23 years, and sitting beside me tonight is our new general manager, Erin Schreenan. What you may not know is she's actually been part of the Diamond Club for over six years. Uh, she's been behind house in the box office as one of those heroes that deals with day-to-day -day operations, uh, kind of on the front line, so to speak, but behind the box office window. Uh, she's done an excellent job in providing the customer service and experience for the number of fans we've had. Last year was our record season of all time. And I just want to congratulate Erin, and uh, I look forward to many things, great things ahead with her and at the leadership at the helm. Um, also, a, also a new member of the team is Tommy Hoppin. And unfortunately, I'm going to make a bad joke, but Tommy's been hopping recently <laughs> with a ton of volunteer requests. His job is to maintain all the 600 plus volunteers that you see when you visit the ballpark and, and maintain their morale, their schedules, their attitudes. It is a tough job, but Tommy is definitely up for it and a fantastic uh, addition to the team as well. Historical significance of the Diamond Club, back in 1993, designated to, to begin with the contract uh, with the Major League Baseball teams as part of our negotiations with, the, with bringing Major League Baseball to Peoria. And Diamond Club serves as a opportunity to enable us to run and operate the sports complex at a very operable standpoint from uh, municipalities, uh, you know, the helping out to the operations from a year-to-year, day-to-day standpoint. Back then, there was 90 volunteers. Uh, today, entering the 23rd year of the partnership, there's over 600 volunteers and, and, they're, and growing. So that's a great sign of, of not only the reputation that Diamond Club and the city have together, but just the fact that they want to come work. And it is 30, 30 straight days of, of volunteerism, and their shifts are five hours, and they're long, they're hot, they're in the parking lots, they're in the ticket-taking areas, they're ushering, and they're dealing with customer service issues. So uh, I really commend the fact that they've kept this, this number of volunteers at such a high level. Also, I want to uh, let you know, too, back then, in 1993, they donated about $7,000 for the first season. And you're going to hear shortly about where we're at now moving forward from a year-to-year -year basis. Um, but one thing most people don't understand about this, the Diamond Club is it's not just about spring training. That is our, our major team tenants and our major season for the city. But we have events all year long that the Diamond Club supports and helps the city maintain the events and uh, customer service and, quite frankly, the reputation of those events. 
Uh, here you'll see actually they're running a little bit of the beer festival f festivities, which is a charitable operation that helps promote and, and encourage uh, residents of Citizens of Peoria to come out and enjoy the sports complex. The more we engage, the more opportunities we have for that to, to occur throughout the year, and the more uh, engagement throughout the year to keep our um, viable city and, and sports complex in operation. This is also compiled when we have soccer returning. So not only will Diamond Club support services for spring training Major League Baseball, but also another professional sports in soccer, which is actually a longer season. That starts mid-April to mid-September. Mid -September. So the, the logistics of that really um, enables us to create, create and promote a year-round activity of Major League Sports in Peoria, which is a huge feat. One thing I really want to stress, too, is the charitable foundation and endeavors that the Diamond Club participates in with, along with the city. They host toy drives for the district. They host Peoria Unified School District. They host all sorts of partner programs. Uh, I was lucky enough to attend the, the annual meeting, Future Business Leaders of America. That's a huge partnership program with the Diamond Club. You're looking at some of our council liaisons as well that participate. It's fantastic for the community and great for the environment in the city of Peoria. Uh, live, work, and play. One of, the, one of the most fundraising opportunities that Diamond Club does have is the annual charity game. And that's something that has been growing over the years and opportunities have increased with our new spring training improvements at the stadium. So we're looking forward to the years ahead with that. Um, March 2nd is our kickoff this year for spring training. Uh, I look forward to seeing everybody there and hopefully we'll throw the first pitch and we'll get spring training underway in a, in a very good way. What they're known for, again, is volunteers. You know, 600 strong, you see them, they're ambassadors of the city. They represent us very well. What you may not know them for is behind the scenes I mentioned earlier about Aaron and the staff that work in the box office well before the, the season starts, six months in advance. They're processing, they're managing, they're taking care of all the aspects of a, a major league ballpark condensed in a, in a 30 day season. So it's a phenomenal task and you're looking at Aaron who's, who's managed that over the last six years. And I've looked forward to the future because not only does she have that knowledge to bring forward with her, she can, she can help us manage as we move into the new type of spring training facilities, more of the social atmosphere and more of engagement with the community on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Also, financial management. It's really fiscal management and a fiscal agent. The Diamond Club reconciles for us. They, they manage the books, if you will, on spring training capacity with the teams. They provide all the back support to manage the bank accounts and the cash, cash transports and things like that. So things that you may not know from a day-to-day -day standpoint are really going on behind the scenes. With that, staff would recommend that we, the City Council approve the extension through 2016 of the 2007 agreement between the City of Peoria and the Peoria Diamond Club. And with that, we'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Council, questions? So. Do I assume that all of the terms and conditions remain the same for the next year? They sure do, Mayor. They would exist uh, through 2000, from the 2007 agreement uh, would go into 2016. No okay. material changes. All right. Council discussion? All right, do I have a motion? I'll move. Second. All right. Council, please vote. Item 16R passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, the next item on the agenda is 17R. This is a public hearing, <coughs> Belia Annexation, 67th Avenue and Pinnacle Peak. This is regarding the annexation of approximately 11,587 square feet of privately owned property located north of the northwest corner of Pinnacle Peak Road and 67th Avenue. Chris Hawkes, our Planning Community Development Director, will make the presentation of this one. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Item 17R. This is a proposed annexation by the city of Peoria on behalf of the landowner, the Balia family. Um, tonight, state statute provides for an initial public hearing where we can take testimony. However, we cannot take action at this time. So the property in question is located generally at the northwest corner of 67th and Pinnacle Peak Road. If you direct your attention to the screen, the area in green is the city of Glendale. The area in brown is Peoria. 
And the area in blue is a, is a Maricopa County Island, if you will. So this property is owned by the Bailey family, including the 1.4 acre property that's immediately to the north of it. Um, as I mentioned, it's currently within a small Maricopa County Island. And I think at one time, it was uh, contemplated to be future right away as part of Pinnacle Peak. But Pinnacle Peak took a bend as the city of Glendale sought to uh, connect um, that roadway with the development to the east to, to, uh, to align the roadway up. So it created this area that uh, was no longer needed for right away. So the purpose would be if the um, annexation was to go through, the applicant has a case that they're reviewing with the city, a rezone case that they would consider this piece with the parcel to the north and, and look to rezone it to R135 or essentially one acre lot. Okay, this graphic uh, identifies the annexation process. So tonight we are holding our initial public hearing. And as I mentioned, uh, no action can be taken tonight. Um, at the conclusion of this public hearing, the 30-day waiting period, we would then collect signatures from the one property owner, and we would bring it back to a future council for future action. So with that, that's all I have. If you have any questions, we have to take it. All right. Thank you. Council, are there any questions for Mr. Hawkes? Okay. This is a public hearing. I declare this public hearing open. Uh, is there anyone who would like to address this issue? Okay, seeing no comments, I declare this public hearing closed. And council, any discussion at all? All right, seeing none, uh, there is no council action required at this time. Uh, the next item pertains to the Vestancia Community Facilities District, and we will be voting in the capacity of the board. The agenda consists of two consent items. Those are the minutes from the February 2nd meeting and the December 31st, 2015 quarterly investment report. Board, are there any items to be removed from consent? No, seeing none, is there any discussion? All right. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Board, please vote. And the consent agenda passes unanimously. We will now move on to call to the public for non-agenda items. If you wish to address the city council, please complete a speaker request form and place it in the bin next to the speaker's podium. I do not have any requests to speak, so we'll now move on to uh, reports from city manager. Thank you, Mayor Carlett and council members. Um, just a couple of items under my report. Uh, um, yes, excuse oh, me. Um, Do I have that? Thank you, sir. I apologize. All right. Patrick Russell. Please come to the podium. State your name for the record, and um, you have three minutes to speak, Great. and the clock Great. will appear Thank up you. there. Uh, my name is Patrick Russell. I live at 7570 West Marconi Avenue, which is the brand new subdivision, Tierra Buena, half mile south of Bell Road at 75th Ave. Okay. I'm here tonight in regards to shopping carts along Bell Road. So um, I have spoken with some, some staff on city council, but I'm, I'm asking for help from the city council. Um, I've been returning carts to the store now. The store's in the neighborhood for over a year myself. I have to do it one at a time in my SUV. That's all I can fit in there. The carts tend to collect along 75th Avenue at the Chevron station on the corner of 75th Avenue and Bell at the bus stop. So um, I guess my concern is the city's invested heavily in Peoria 83 which is your shopping district as well as your sports area. But the gateway to that area looks horrible because shopping carts accumulate at that corner as well as along all of Bell Road right near the mall there and trash accumulates as well. So I'm really asking for the city's help to do something about it. Um, I have spoken with city council as I said and they've referred me to the cart service to call them to see if they'll pick up the carts. When I call them the first question they ask me is who do the carts belong to? They don't service any of the stores in the neighborhood. So the carts sit there. 
I've talked to store managers numerous times about if they could lock up their carts at night. You know, a simple bike cable, putting a padlock on them to see if they can keep them secure. None of them want to invest the money. No one wants to invest the money to put a lock on the wheel so that they lock if they go a certain distance. So I, I just think the city and the, the retailers are being short-sighted because eventually people will stop coming if the neighborhood looks trashy. And if you want an example of that, just look at Metro Center. So I just think we really need to protect my new neighborhood, my brand new home, the value of it that I just bought a year ago, as well as the city uh, tax revenues. So in addition to that, we also have panhandlers in the neighborhood. I know you can't do a lot about that, but anything we can do, um, that would be helpful as well. And there's also a homeless encampment under the bridge at 75th Avenue, just south of Paradise Lane, which is just south of Belt Road. The Peoria police have done a great job going out there and you know, kicking the people out when they see them, so I really appreciate that. But a ton of trash has accumulated under the bridge, and it's making its way down into the riverbed. I have written um, your customer service line, and they said they would look into it, but nothing's happened. So I'm just hoping that a, maybe a bulk trash pickup can be done. Again, tourists as well as a lot of folks use that river trail there, and it just looks horrible. And there is just a ton of trash and shopping carts there as well. So just hoping um, folks can help. Thank you. Thank you. So based on the open meetings law, meeting law, we are not allowed to respond to you, but I am sure that um, the, the city manager has some staff members who you might want to discuss this with. Great. Um, yes, Mr. Russell, um, if you would talk to Don Prince, uh, my assistant who's in the back, um, she'll be happy to, to help you with all the items you've mentioned. Great. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. We will now move on to reports from city manager. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Carlin. Um, just a couple of uh, reports uh, that I have. Um, the first will be... Uh, from our fire and medical uh, chief, Bobby Reese, uh, about the uh, exciting news uh, that uh, we will be able to begin um, patient transport, ambulance service. Chief Reese. Thank you, Mr. Swenson. Mayor, Council, delighted to report that a little over two weeks ago we received our initial CON from uh, DHS. What that means is that uh, we can now pursue our final CON and the requirement there is to acquire one ambulance and then um, get it inspected by DHS and, and uh, then we get our CON. Our, with that, our friends to the west, Northwest County, stepped up and uh, offered us a ambulance to lease us an ambulance for a dollar a month until we acquire our own, our own ambulance. So uh, an IGA is being drafted as we speak and so we should have an ambulance that we could uh, take to DHS, get inspected, get a number, and we can start the process at that time and get our, our uh, final CON. So that's what I got to report. And uh, we'll be um, bringing forward uh, budget amendments uh, necessary within this current budget year, uh, and then also in the budget, uh, upcoming budget process of uh, talking uh, about how we will be rolling out the, the implementation uh, of, of this service. So. Thank you. That's really big news and great news for our citizens. Indeed. No, and, and Chief Reese and the, and the staff team uh, that worked on this uh, deserve a lot of credit uh, for their ability to, to move through the regulatory uh, framework uh, to get to this point. So we're real pleased about that. Uh, the next item uh, I have is uh, a video, and uh, we'll be showing uh, this uh, about the opening of the colonnade that we recently had uh, at the sports complex. Uh, Chris Calcaterra gave a presentation earlier about our partnership with the Diamond Club. Um, but as the council knows, I think all of you were able to attend. Uh, we opened a new facility um, at our uh, sports complex uh, just in time for the upcoming spring training season, and that is our colonnade. Uh, and I believe that this video also covers a bit about the upcoming spring training uh, season. Situated along the third baseline, the new 3,300 square foot colonnade at the Peoria Sports Complex was introduced to the public at an open house January 29th. The event featured a welcome from Mayor Carlett and the facility ribbon cutting. Oh, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Woo! In addition, there were plenty of opportunities to socialize and experience the upscale atmosphere and amenities this premier private event destination offers. The Colonnade features catering, a bar, 
audiovisual connectivity, televisions, and private restrooms. It is available for reservation and will be the place to hold a company event, seminar, conference, wedding, or a private party. For more information about reserving the colonnade, visit PeoriaSportsComplex.com. Okay. <laughs> Great video. The, uh, the next item, last item I have under uh, my report uh, will be uh, Chris Hawkes coming back uh, to give us uh, a presentation on Passport to Summer. Chris? Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm pleased to announce that our support program, uh, which is a human services program that's led by Debbie Pearson, will be holding our inaugural human services event this summer, Saturday, May 7th at Rio Vista Park. So it's themed around services and resources to help families in need throughout the summer. And I think with the record heat we've been having, I think summer's a lot closer than we all think, and it's coming. The city has partnered with Adelante Healthcare, Wells Fargo Bank, and Heart Pantry. Heart stands for Helping at Risk Teens to promote a number of informational and direct services like uh, vision and hearing screenings at no cost, dental screenings and fluoride treatments for children, uh, summer fun food bags, medical screenings, uh, we'll also be having educational workshops on financial wellness, heat fatigue and water consumption, internet safety, and free clothing opportunities as well. So in preparation for the May 7th event, uh, the city is hosting a food drive within all public buildings. And so we have pink boxes located within all, with all public buildings. Uh, we're collecting a number of food items, uh, things for breakfast, including powdered milk, toasted pastries, lunch items, peanut butter, canned tuna, all kinds of canned and packaged items. So um, those are available in all city buildings. We'll be collecting those for the May 7th event, but look for more information as this event approaches. That's all I have. Thank you, Chris. And that uh, concludes my report. Mayor. Thank you. We will now move on to reports from the city council. Start with youth council liaison Bowden. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a short comment today. I had the opportunity to attend an event for the Heart for the City organization. Um, and it is always impressive to see groups like this that work so hard to improve in and elevate the lives of youth in the state of Arizona, um, regardless of city boundaries. Um, we're all working for the same cause. And it is plain to see that there are so many people who are dedicated to making Arizona a great state to grow up in. Um, and that's impressive to see. So thank you. Thank you. Council Member Fontana. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, I had a park fest at uh, Park Ridge Park, and I failed to mention in uh, last week uh, that we had our first responders there, both the police and the fire. The fire set up an endurance uh, course for kids, and the police, of course, have their bike rodeo. Um, bike rodeo is always a really big hit, and we give uh, helmets away, bike helmets away, to all the kids that participate. And, uh, I'd like to thank Brendan Foley for uh, helping out with that as well. We had about, I'm going to say about 12 police officers, and it's it was it's always good to see them there. They they make the event uh, actually a better event, and and I wanted to make sure that I thank them for their for their support. Um, I chair the subcommittee on boards and, and commissions, and I'm supported by Councilmember Edwards and Councilmember Finn, but. Really, I'm support, our, our subcommittee is supported a great deal by the uh, city clerk's office. And uh, we're the ones who uh, interview the candidates for all the positions uh, for our subcommittees and for our commissions. And, and uh, the books that are put together for us every month by the city clerk's office are, are, are perfect. They make our job easier. And I wanted to make sure that I thank uh, uh, Don Glazer, Linda Blas for doing that and, and helping us out a great deal. It's, uh, uh, it just makes our job a lot easier and I'm very uh, grateful to them. Uh, Friday we had a recognition event um, for our volunteers. 
uh, again, uh, Don Glazer, Linda Blas, Rhonda Garaminski pulled this off, and it was a it was a great evening at Arizona Broadway Theater. We had a tribute band to the uh, Eagles, and um, the uh, I thought the entertainment was was just amazing, and we all had a, a great time. The people that I talked to at the event uh, said they really enjoyed it, had a good time, and again, uh, that was. Uh, pulled off by the help from our, uh, our city clerk's office. So I just want us to thank them again and uh, for all their hard work. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Edwards. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on the 6th, um, I was proud to uh, be part of the neighborhood pride cleanup uh, where we were able to um, enrich the lives of about uh, 15 to 20 residents um, by painting, cleaning, uh, hauling rocks. I personally did about a ton of rock, shoveling about a ton of rocks uh, into the neighborhood. I was pretty sore the day after, but it was just, it was well worth it. So Chris, I want to have you thank your staff uh, for all of the hard work that they did coordinating with the residents in the, uh, in the community. They were all very appreciative. They came out with drinks and food for all of the volunteers that helped. And I know it's a huge undertaking, but it just seems to grow every year. And I just want to th thank you to thank your staff um, on my behalf. Um, on the 10th, I attended the uh, first meeting of the P community park number three. What a tremendous turnout. I know our vice mayor will probably talk a little bit more about it, but it's so exciting to see residents come out and, and really show an interest of this park because it's this is gonna serve the whole North Valley or the whole North of Peoria uh, for the future. So it's just a great turnout of residents. And then like Councilman Tenna said, I, I attended the uh, boards and commissions dinner. Um, every Everybody there thought so highly of the, of the uh, show so I think the Eagles was a great, uh, a great choice. And then finally, uh, on Saturday, I attended the uh, 28th annual Peoria Greek Fest, and uh, what a phenomenal turnout. Uh, the food was f fantastic, the entertainment was top notch, and next year, everybody needs to come out and, and partake in it. it. If you've never been, it, you have to go. It's a pretty, pretty cool mm -hmm. event. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Vice Mayor Binsbacher. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to uh, congratulate Chief Ruiz and his team on uh, acquiring their certificate of necessity. That is just a huge accomplishment and to do that without interruption and now we're just one ambulance away from providing even better service to our citizens and then to have a neighbor step up and offer that opportunity to us. Um, just speaks volumes about the level of professionalism and the relationships that are being maintained there. And that just is so important and it really does come into play in helping us continue to do great work. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, the uh, community park meeting, yes, was fantastic. Uh, thank you, Council Member Edwards, for being there to support. There was a great turnout. We had um, around seven, 70 uh, residents there, and they were as excited as I was to talk about this fantastic park that's coming to Northern Peoria. We had all the experts there from the engineering department, from community services, at different renderings, and people were moving around from board to board, uh, interested, engaged, and getting questions answered. And this is just one step towards many to uh, get the community and, and the citizens involved in this fantastic project. So if you didn't know already, I'm very excited. <laughs> Uh, and then, yes, boards and commissions, thank you to all our volunteers. The mayor said it. We've all said it. We cannot run our city without volunteers. They are a very, very critical part of creating the culture that we have here in Peoria, which is very, very special. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Finn. Thank you, Mayor. Um, start off with uh, Park Fest at uh, Paseo Verde Park on um, on Saturday the 6th, as I kind of sat out there for the, for the, uh, the park fest, I kind of took stock of all of the people that were donating their time out there on, on Saturday. And if you haven't been to one, I, I encourage you to go. Um, live band, but when I looked around, you know, police department was there, engineering, fire department, human services, community services, environmental resources. There are so many people out there just volunteering and, and spending their Saturday out there to, to kind of make a difference. You know, community services were out there as early as 8.30 in the morning setting up. It went from 11 to um, 2 o'clock. We gave out 106 free uh, bicycle helmets to kids, which I thought was great. PD did the bike rodeo, which they always do, which is always a big hit. And then 
you know, fire shows up with a fire truck and it's almost unfair, all the kids run to the fire truck. But, you know, if I could do that, I'd probably do it too. Um, 300 hot dogs got eaten at the park. I, I thought that was kind of impressive. We gave away six bicycles. Um, but it's just an amazing event, you know, just go out there and kind of, I just love sitting there watching the kids play. It was just, it was just awesome, you know, to see kids out there throwing the football around and hot dog in one hand, football in the other is impressive. Um, I'm not going to go through the, um, the boards and commissions because I was there as well and the, the, uh, for the, the dinner and the thank you. I do want to thank everybody, but, you know, I also want to thank you, Bill, for obviously we, we nominated you, or as, you know, we say at my house, you got voluntold to be president again. Um, but you graciously accepted that, and you do a phenomenal job of running that um, and keeping that going. So I, I really appreciate you stepping up and, and accepting our... Um, volunteerism for you to be the president again. So you do a fantastic job. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to just just mention real quick, um, you know, a lot of times you don't have an opportunity to um, interface with our finest police officers out there in, in the field, and I had an opportunity this weekend. And I just wanted to say that um, I, I spoke with Officer Span and Officer Chavez, and they were absolutely fantastic. They were They were just, I could have sat there and talked to them for half the morning, but they apparently had business and <laughs> had, to, had to get moving, but they were awesome. Officer Chavez has only been on the force for about four weeks, so uh, welcome to the force, officer. Um, and they just did an amazing job, just um, how they, I don't think they had any idea who I was, and it was just an amazing, how, it was just amazing how um, <coughs> wonderful they were and accommodating and how, how well, they, um, how well they, they spoke to me. I'm not gonna lie to you though, Officer Chavez scares me a little bit. I think I would not wanna mess with her at all. <laughs> at all. I'd rather take on Officer Span than Officer Chavez. So, anywho, that being said, that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you. She's scary. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Council Member Hunt. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I had a great weekend last, last weekend, and I think the others who were at the same events as I was were very impressed also. Um, I'll just mention again the boards and commissions. Thank you. I felt such a wonderful evening experience that I know that our volunteers felt thanked. Um, the mayor mentions at that time that, you know, we can't pay you, all we can give you is a dinner. I really thought we made them feel much more special than just a dinner the other night. I think that was the best one of those, and I've been to a lot of them. Uh, <clears throat> I think that was the best one ever with uh, the Eagles uh, wannabes performing. They might have been, might as well have been the Eagles um, themselves there. And then Saturday night, um, a not-for-profit that's very, very close to my heart is Heart for the City. Um, Jer Joe Eriquez is the CEO of that organization, and they basically walk life with, with kids. That's what their motto is, and they reach out to inner-city kids through football, uh, volleyball for the girls. They pay tuition to Joy Christian School for kids that are flunking in a regular school situation because they have terrible home lives. Nobody gets them up and sends them to school in the morning. <coughs> um, and this was, <coughs> excuse me, a benefit for them. And it was at the Renaissance Hotel. 90 tables, 900 people were there. And this has grown in eight years from 80 people in Joe's backyard to 900 people supporting this amazing <coughs> organization. So that was just, um, for those who attended and sat at my table, I know they were very, very inspired and <coughs> really want to wish that organization well. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Leone. Yeah, I just got a couple of things here. On uh, February 12th, I was, I was one of the ones who attended the city's Boards of Commission Appreciation Dinner. I just want to thank the outgoing board members and, and thank them for their service to the city. And also I want to thank the new board that's coming in that was here today to get their plaque. I want to wish them lots of luck. The food was great and the, intent, the uh, entertainment was great. And we want to keep this uh, tradition going on. The other thing is, it's, it's real quick. Uh, I know we got the presidential and we got all the other elections coming up. And I think if you're not interested to vote, uh, Maybe you should think about it and get ready to vote. And I think it's important uh, for, the, for this country that you vote and also for the city elections. 
Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. And God bless America. Thank you. Youth Council Liaison Camacho. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was also in attendance of the Heart for the City Gala, and that is an awesome organization that is geared towards helping um, inner city kids and supporting them and you know, raising them up to uh, their full potential. And I'm very happy that I was given the opportunity to support them. And I had a great time at the ball. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And there being no further business, we are adjourned.